This is where the trees rest. And so this is the vault. In the bowels of a government preservation center in a secure vault amid rows of priceless artwork and historic treasures, the sacred agreements between First Nations and the Crown lie locked away. So this is where the treaties would be stored? Yes, this is where the treaty is stored. For Manise Young, treaty preservation is a hands-on affair. The Library and Archives Canada official carts this one from the cool climate-controlled vault through the winding concrete of the department's Gatineau, Quebec facility up to a sunny lab on the upper floor. So what we have here is the James Bay Treaty Number 9. It's the um, amendments of the Treaty 9, or adhesions. She traces the fine craftsmanship of this adhesion to Treaty 9 in Ontario, highlighting its ornate gold tooling, black goat leather binding and sturdy parchment pages. With our job in conservation, we're always finding the balance between access, which is what we're doing now, but also the long-term preservation. That's the delicate dance now on display. While the public can see these documents on request, few get this close. And while sending them to visit their home First Nations is cumbersome, it does happen, says Young. A lot of people get very emotional as well because these are their ancestors. It's a very big connection to the past. That's the case for lawyer and former Kuchiching First Nation chief Sarah Mainville. She got the chance to see the original Treaty 3 while on loan to the First Nations in that territory in Western Ontario and Manitoba. It's meaningful to, to see the document. And something communities shouldn't have to wait another century and a half to see again, she adds. The Anishinaabe, um, <clears throat> you know, should have more regular visits uh, with, with these documents, you know, and shouldn't take... 150th anniversary. Second. It's easy to feel the power in that presence. Early treaties looked like this. The Huron Tract Purchase of 1827. It opened up a swath of southern Ontario to European settlement, yet it looks like it was scrawled hastily across this single piece of now faded parchment. Compare that with these copies of Treaty 11 or the Williams Treaties, both signed roughly a century later. The careful crafting signals the evolution of treaty making in a new country but it can't conceal the colonial intent. They're really only showing a partial story. Um, or we're not really seeing any of the Indigenous perspectives of that documented record. The prevailing attitude at the time was that Indigenous people were going to disappear and assimilate into mainstream culture. So what does reconciliation look like in here, the Canadian government's official memory? That's a key question for a department that hasn't escaped criticism amid calls for all sectors of society to contribute. It's more than a little ironic for Claudette Commanda to learn where the treaties live. In these steel drawers. Yeah. Her people, the Algonquin Nation, never signed a treaty, meaning the land that both Gatineau and Ottawa occupy was never surrendered by First Nations. Just one of many hard truths she says the country isn't ready to hear. There are many deniers out there that feel that the treaties mean nothing, that the land was meant to be taken. So are they ready? Is Canada ready for the truth? No. And while reconciliation may be messy, she says this solution is simple. The government should be working with First Nations, with Treaty Nations, to ensure that the First Nations, they have the ownership, the control and the management of the treaties that belong to them. Is that what reconciliation would look like in this case? Absolutely. Absolutely. A conversation for another day, perhaps. But for now, it's back to the vault.